All right, so boom. Weezy F Baby and the F stands for favorite Lil Wayne mixtape songs. That's what I'm going to be talking about today. Wayne has plenty of songs from his legendary mixtape run that I enjoy, but I decided to make a video highlighting the ones I listen to and I like the absolute most out of all of them. Mind you, this is a my favorite song list, not a best mixtape Weezy songs list, so don't be complaining if a particular song isn't here and I don't like it as much as you do, because it's not that serious. <laughs> Let's get to it. This is the first Lil Wayne mixtape song I fell in love with. <laughs> I was so young when I found this song. I was listening to this when I was 11 years old. And specifically, let, let me tell y'all something real quick. So when I was younger, I was one of those kids that always walked to school. I never got a ride. I never took the bus. My little ass used to walk to and from school every single day. The furthest I ever walked was the first month of my sixth grade year. So right when I started middle school, I used to walk to this school that was 18 blocks away from my house. And that was a smooth 30, 40 minute walk. I had an MP3 player with the same songs on it that I would listen to all the time. And one of them was this song by Lil Wayne called Hoes, Hoes, Hoes. And it features two of his members from the Click Squad Up, Young Nut and Young Yo. Young Nut is actually Kid Kid, believe it or not. He used to call himself Nut the Kid, which was a horrible name, so I'm glad he changed it. And Young Yo, I still don't know who this is to this day. I thought this song was on the Squad Up 2 mixtape, but it is on there and it's on Squad Up 1 from what I found. The track is an interpolation of Jay-Z's Girls, Girls, Girls. Y'all know Jay-Z was like, I love girls, 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 I do adore. You'll put your number on this paper because I would love to date you. Holla at you when I come off tour. Lil Wayne flipped it into, I f hoes, 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 ho, you know you a ho. Look, mommy, straighten up your hair and get your ass out of here. Holla at you when I want some more. What I love about this song is one, the production. Even on Jay-Z's track, these background vocals and this beat is incredible. But I also like the structure. Young Yo doesn't appear at all until the third verse. The first two verses consist of Wayne and Young Nut trading lines back and forth about the type of girls they be smashing. And some of the stuff they say is so funny to me. I got this whole name Jackie, healthy, not all nasty, pussy tighter than a ten and a half on Shaq's feet, and it's wetter than a practice sweater at a track meet. The parts where they go back and forth are like they're having a conversation. I got a high school flame that called me Dwayne. Been f her since her freshman and her pussy the same. Man, that reminds me of this hoe in junior high who used to give me head till she lose her mind. I got a hoe with a sports car. She thinks she fly. Can't fuck her all the time cause she'll think she mine. <laughs> Stuff like this really makes me like their verses. Young Yo's verse is pretty trash. The only thing I like about his verse is the very first lines at the beginning. Mind y'all, I was 11 years old and I knew all the words to this song and I still love it to this day. Of course, there had to be a No Ceilings track in here. The No Ceilings tape is almost 15 years old and for all this time, this has always been my favorite song on the tape. It's a freestyle over Fabulous' song, Throw It In The Bag, and the hook on Fab's song is a sped up version from a part of a The Dream song called Fancy. Throw It In The Bag by Fab was just a song about how he don't mind tricking on his girl because it ain't tricking if you got it. <laughs> he got his black car, he live and lavish himself, so he doesn't mind helping his girl do the same. Wayne does the same thing, but you know how Wayne is when it comes to punchlines and such. He tries to say the most clever thing, and he always got to talk about smashing some broad. Give her information, take her on vacation, give her a dope dick, now she under the sedation. Wake her in the morning, breakfast where she slept at, tell her go shopping, I can't wait till she get back. Louis flip flop in a pair of pink sweatpants, she wear that on my jet, I f her after jet lag. <laughs> I will say that my favorite line in the whole song comes right after the jet lag line when he says Y'all can say money don't buy happiness, but you can't be happy and have no money either, so I'd rather have some bread with an attitude. That's essentially the whole song, a cool little track about the lavish life Wayne is living, and he got a bad bitch that can live that life with him. Just what Fab song is about. The sample alone will make you enjoy this track. 
Now, even though this is a track from the Squad Up era, there are no other Squad Up members on this song. So you don't have to worry about any young nuts showing up anywhere. Unless I'm hearing someone's voice wrong, I know I'm not tripping because I'm sure this is a Solo Wayne track. It's on Squad Up 6 and it's fascinating that a Solo Wayne song is one of the best on there. The best thing about this song without a doubt is the melody on the chorus. I don't know who Weezy was hanging out with that convinced him to sing something this clean, but it turned out to be fire. Roll On is Wayne bragging about how fly he and his homies are, so fly that whenever they go out to the club or whenever they pop out anywhere to have a good time, they get all the bitches and specifically they'll take yo bitch. And that's what he's talking about on this angelic ass hook. I get my roll on with all of my niggas. We pop and then do our thizzle and take your hoe home. That, that's how the hook sounds and it's amazing to me. He, he does it again on the second part of the hook. Roll on with all of y'all bitches. They pop and then they start stripping and take their clothes off. This is one of the songs I recommend the most in this video. I can't even lie. This is a top three of my favorite hook from Lil Wayne's mixtapes. Other than the hook, my favorite line is in the last verse where Wayne is talking about how he was about to start spitting game to this shorty, but her man intervened and stopped him. And then Wayne apologized like, oh my fault, your girl reminds me of this chick that I had with me yesterday. And then Wayne realizes that is the girl that he had with him yesterday. I feels on your bitch, sorry my nigga, I thought she looked familiar. That part makes me laugh every time, y'all. <laughs> Yo girl remind me of that bitch I had yesterday. Why? Cause she that bitch I had yesterday. <laughs> I love this song right here. But every other city I go, I still see the same silly ho. Another song from the Squad Up series, man. Sometimes I feel like the younger people who claim they know all about Weezy's mixtapes don't even know about the Squad Up series. They just be talking about the Drought 3, No Ceilings, and Sorry for the Wait, because that's what everybody else says are his best mixtapes. I've heard all of Wayne's early projects, and it led to me finding songs that I love, such as Frontin' from Squad 6 the Remix, which is kind of a deluxe version of the original Squad Up 6. Now, this song is a twist on Pharrell's first hit single, Frontin'. Now the reason why I put a picture of Wayne and Lauren London is because there's a connection here that ties everything together. So this track by Wayne is a little storytelling track. Lauren London rose to fame in the early 2000s by appearing in music videos. She was in videos for Snoop, Ludacris, but her most notable appearance was fronting by Pharrell, where she played Pharrell's love interest in the video even though she was 17 and he was 28 at the time, but that's a different story. And Frontin' was a huge song, so millions upon millions of people have seen this video. Now, where Wayne comes into play is that Lauren London is actually someone he had an on and off relationship with for about 11 years, from the late 90s to the late 2000s, and they have a child together. So Wayne tells a story in this song about how he woke up one day in the crib and he heard the beat to Pharrell's song playing when he woke up. So he turned his head to the TV going like, hey, did this beat is fire, what song is this? And when he looked at the screen, he saw Lauren on TV in the music video. So the hook is Wayne going like, damn, when I was dating her, I was trying to be a serious boyfriend. I ain't think she'll turn around and be a hoe appearing in all these videos. Woke up in the crib on the weekend, my own seemed like I fell asleep with the TV on 106 in Park. New joint of the day just started to play. It was this joint here, so I turned that way cause the beat was bumping. I wiped the cold out my eyes and who did I see? My ex-girlfriend on BET. I'm like, not again. Cause when she was with me, I was serious though. Never knew she turned out to be a video ho. I'm like, man, that's fucked up. Wayne also says in the beginning dialogue that this was based on a true story. So, hey, I believe him. But here's the plot twist for this song. Wayne claims that all the times he was telling Lauren he wanted to be in a serious, committed relationship with her, that he was fronting and that he was lying. Instead, he wanted to smash other girls, which is why he says, Weezy F baby and the F stands for fronting, but I was just fronting because the F stands for fucking. <laughs> I never wanted to be in a serious relationship. I wanted to smash who I wanted, which is why me and Lauren's relationship didn't work out. The Pharrell production sounds great. I just love how the track has a little story behind it. And this also isn't Wayne's first time talking about Lauren in a song. 
His song, Young and Blues, from the 500 Degrees album, the second verse of that song is about how the two of them met and how their relationship not working out was Wayne's fault. All of these connections makes Friend a great song to me. One of my favorite beats of all time comes from the track that this is a freestyle over. So 9394 Baby from the Suffix mixtape is Wayne and Birdman rapping over Young Jeezy's Go Crazy. The drums and the trumpets on this track have always been so heavy hitting. And Jeezy's track was about how the people in the streets love his music so much that whenever he drops, all the dope boys and the trap niggas, the thug niggas, drug dealers, they go crazy. Like, yo, that boy Jeezy just dropped something. Wayne flips that and uses the song to talk about not only when he drops something, the people rock with it, but they say that Wayne's style and sound reminds them of how Birdman used to rap in the early 90s. Cause y'all know Wayne is Birdman's protege, always has been. First of all, I've always felt like Birdman Jr. was a nickname that never caught on for Lil Wayne. Literally the only person that calls Lil Wayne Birdman Jr. is himself. <laughs> we as fans, we've never called him that. But the second half of the hook is, and when they hear that new Wheezy, it reminds them of that old baby, that 93, 94 baby. Yeah, before the stunner. Yeah, the real Birdman. I'm the Birdman Jr. The reason why Wayne says the real Birdman and before the stunner is because before he became the Birdman that we all know him as, the hot boy, number one stunner, the dude that only raps about money and drugs, in his early days, his rap name used to be B32, which stood for baby with the 32 golds, referencing the 32 gold teeth in his mouth. And he even dropped an album in 1993. So the super early Birdman fans, that's who Wayne is referring to in this song. When I rap, it reminds the real OG fans about early Birdman back when he was B32. And this is one of the few songs where I enjoy Birdman's verse. My favorite line is when he talks about his reaction to the first time seeing P. Diddy in the Bad Boy era. And I remember when I first saw Puff, nigga, I was in the projects camouflaged up, nigga. I like this song so much for the same reason I like Frontin' so much, in that I really appreciate how there's an actual real life connection to the song that teaches some history as opposed to it being a random freestyle where Wayne went in the studio and talked about whatever. So I'm gonna cover two songs here because both tracks feature the same person and they're the reason why I like the song so much. And that artist is real. I love when Real and Wayne make tracks together. Real is the same brother that was on I Miss My Dogs and On My Own from the Carter One, which are both top three songs from that album. Everything Would Be Fine and Tomorrow are both tracks about relationships and women, so I included them in one entry. Everything Would Be Fine is Wayne talking about how he's done being a player or quote unquote, he retired his jersey as some man call it. He found his one piece that he wants to stick with and he really wants to treat her well. So he's done giving his number out to random hoes and messing around. Reels hook is all inspirational and lovey-dovey, <laughs> telling the girl that they can make it through all of the hard times and the ups and downs as long as they have God on their side. Baby girl, I know that we can make it through the weather as long as we strong, everything will stay together. When times get hard, look, as we call upon the Lord, everything will be fine, everything will be fine. The song is pretty cheesy, but I like the way it sounds. <laughs> Now, Tomorrow flips the lyrics of Quincy Jones and Tevin Campbell's song, Tomorrow. Tomorrow will bring better you, better me. They turned the track into something completely ignorant, though. <laughs> this song is about Wayne being in the club, hollering at girls at the bar, being in VIP, and getting the girl and smashing her. Him and the girl are so drunk and are having such a good time that tomorrow they're going to be sober and they're going to be feeling better. But for tonight, the girl is ready to bust it down and bend that ass over. I told y'all they turned into something ignorant. <laughs> I know tomorrow will bring a better you, a better me. But tonight she's so fucked up. She's on her third Long Island iced tea. And she will bust it down when she hear, when she hear that beat. And she gonna get up, get low, bend over, and shake her thong to this song. Real be making the most ignorant stuff sound so good. <laughs> 
One thing I will honestly say about tomorrow is that it's way longer than it needs to be. After the second verse and the last hook or two, Wayne has this long ass bridge and outro. This song is 5 minutes and 45 seconds long, but for me the real song ends at the 4 minute mark because that additional 115 seconds is Wayne saying a whole bunch of random stuff like pop the pussy don't let the pussy pop you, pop the pussy don't let the pussy pop you, you know it ain't tricking if you got it, so nigga why you tricking? You know it ain't tricking if you got it. So nigga, why you tricking? They call me Whistle, Fizzle, Fizzle, Whistle, Whistle, Fizzle, Whistle. Like I never, <laughs> I promise y'all, I never let this full song play out. Like I said, once it hits like the four minute mark when the last chorus is done playing, I, I put on something else. <laughs> Shout out to Real though. He's a big reason why I like both of these songs. You'll come to notice that Wayne has several songs where he goes back and forth between talking about wanting a real strong relationship with a woman and then he'll turn around and have a song about being in VIP at the club and just smashing random girls. So you just got to get used to it. Every Man Wants a Woman samples the song Just Kicking It by Escape. This track is pretty straightforward. Now that he's not on the player trip, he flips Escape song about how every man was a woman that will cater to him, talk to him about anything he needs to get off his chest, cook for him, and someone who he can chill with and always have a good time with. That's Wayne's entire approach with this track. Even if it's a girl that got some street and some hood in her, as long as she look good and she's willing to be his main piece, he's going to give her the world. She critique, but that ass is street. She sweet, but that ass is street. She keeps that ass out the street, cause that ass for me. And as for me, I love her to the last of me. Another part that I like too is just how on the hook after the escape sample says, every man wants a woman, Lil Wayne comes in and says, yeah, and I'm a grown ass man, shout it. He does that every time. The song isn't as poppy as a comfortable with baby face, but it's certainly better than his super whack relationship songs like So Special with John Legend. So if you really want to hear Wayne on some grown man relationship stuff, a real grown man song outside of that, you are so fine. Then this is the one for you. I've mentioned this song before in my rap songs I loved after the first listen video, and nothing has changed. I still like the hell out of this track. It samples Anita Baker's You're the Best Thing Yet. And you're the best thing. The edited version of Anita's vocals on this song makes her sound like Beyonce. I promise you, if you listen close to this Wayne beat, you would think it's Bay. To be honest, I don't even know if this is a real mixtape. <laughs> the drought is over six. Just looking at this cover with Wayne looking like Devil Jin from Tekken and all these additional Devil Jins in the back, I thought this was a fan-made compilation project of random songs, not something that Wayne himself put together. But Wayne took Anita's love song and made it about his rap career and said how there are rappers young that are fresh in the game and the OGs that was here before him, they have told him that he's one of the best rappers ever and that he deserves his flowers and his stamp as the best. Now, I want to say what my number one favorite thing of all time about Lil Wayne is. It's his delivery. I want y'all to tell me if I'm tweaking with what I'm about to say, but hear me out. Wayne has always had that type of delivery to where when you know all of the words to a song of his, you have a lot of fun rapping his music. When you can spit a Wayne verse or a whole song word for word, bar for bar, it makes you feel like that nigga. <laughs> and after you get done rapping, you'd be like, Woo, Wayne killed this. <laughs> for me, I get that feeling when I rap the last half of Best Thing Yet. The last verse of this song is like two minutes long and he goes in the whole time. Even the ending is perfect. He ends off the two minute verse by pointing out the sample and saying, and that's Miss Baker saying that I'm the, then it cuts to the sample of her singing, best thing yet. And if this camera shoots me dead, Lord save my chains, Lord save my rings. I am way too vain. <laughs> Listen to that Kanye again. I play the game like I made the game. You playing like you trying to get traded, man. And you ain't gotta call me the greatest, man. But I am more of a dog than the greatest dame. You boys acting like ladies, man. Crying like 
got to have babies, man. And you can find me grinding on the days it rain. And that's because I know the sun will raise again. And when they do, I'ma praise the main. They say you crazy, man, but I just think I'm main. And that's what's big for saying that I'm the... Woo! Wayne killed this. So I don't believe this song was actually on a mixtape. I found this track as a Lucy, and it turns out that this is a song that Wayne took off of the Carter 2 because it got leaked. It was made for the album, but after some tracks got released out of his control, he decided not to put them on the album, and Do What You Do is one of them. There's a project out there called The Carter 2.5 that has this song in it and the other songs that was allegedly supposed to be on the album. Another song I like from this original Carter 2 is called That Somebody featuring Currency. Wayne's performance on that song is actually horrible, but I love the jazzy production that it has. Don't you be too surprised if the ball come through too high. I'm just against now, Do What You Do is a song of Wayne responding to all of his haters and telling them that he's not concerned about what they're doing or have to say about him because Wayne is doing good and always has been good. And you can do what you want to do because I do me and I do it real well. And yes, I, I'm going to get by and I'm going to get mine. So tell the haters I say that I'm doing just fine. This man even agrees with the hood adage of if you become a cop, then we're no longer homies. It don't matter how long I knew you. Once you become a part of 12, we are not the same. We know the cops don't like us because they want to rock just like us. Yeah. But even if we knew you since diapers, if you're a cop now, you are not just like us. The production has these certain chords on it that makes a sound to me that is so fun to imitate. That little sound that goes Do What You Do has a great sound, and if this would have been on the official Carter 2 album, this would have been a top seven track on that project. For those of you who don't remember me saying this, I think the Carter 2 is like half skips. It's about eight, nine songs on that album that are pretty mid. So Do What You Do, this song would have been better than Oh No, I'm a Deep Boy, Lock and Low, Mo Fire, Grown Man, Money On My Mind, Hit Em Up. This song is watching all of those. Y'all yeah. know I wasn't going to let this video end without talking about a Carter 3 era song. Now, even though I really like this song, I'm someone that does not smoke. I stopped smoking when I was in middle school. But there's a gang of songs about weed, about being high, that are my jams. A lot of them are from Bone Thugs too. Those brothers have some great smoking tracks, with my favorite one probably being Smoke On from Lazy Bone. Now, funny that I was just talking about the Carter 2 leaks that didn't make the album, because that's officially what Kush is. The project that is on, the leak, was actually put out by Lil Wayne himself, and it consists of five songs that was supposed to be on the wildly overrated The Carter 3 album. Yeah, 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 nigga. I said it, overrated. That album is loaded with skips too. For every fire, Mr. Carter, Dr. Carter, and Tie My Hands, there's a weak ass phone home, Lala, and Lollipop. But because some tracks from the Carter 3 got leaked, Wayne decided to hook the fans up by polishing the songs and mixing them better and putting them on an official tape. Now, this production by Maestro is definitely what makes the song, no doubt. Wayne himself was okay to me. I would say my favorite line was the I got a grill, I don't have to get my tooth fixed. The tooth fairy would retire if I lose it. Wayne definitely was spending a ton of money on Diamond Grill, so hey, I get it. I think I will enjoy this song way more if I was smoking to it, but I guess I'll never get that experience. Now, just like I slandered the Carter 2, I will say that if Kush was on the Carter 3, it would be a top 10 track. This is over tracks like You Ain't Got Nothing, Playing With Fire, 3 P, and especially, especially, especially over a milli. Outro, outro, hip -hip 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 -out.